I'm gonna be giving you some, some stories and some points. I'm gonna give you the point, I'm gonna give you the story and the application here today. So we are now live on Instagram as well. I make sure everybody on Instagram knows what the topic is and we are gonna get started in a short period of time. So as you are, if you are checking in now on Facebook, hit the share button. Even if you're watching the replay, hit the share button. If you're checking in on Instagram, tell me your name and location in the comments section and I'll shout you out before we get into the material. As you come in, tell me your name and location in the comments section, and I will shout you out as we get into this material. This is Dre All Day. It is Tuesday, April the 28th, 2020. We are almost at the end of the first trimester of the year. If you haven't written out your goals for the month of May, write them out. If you haven't reviewed your goals from the month of April, go and review them now. Don't wait till the last day of the month to do it. Don't be late. Late is forgotten. You already know that. So we see we got some people checking in. If you leave a name and location in the comment section, I will shout you out. First comment is Brandon Pensacola. We got Akash checking in from Toronto. Adrian from Germany. Welcome everybody who is coming in. If you're checking in on Facebook, hit the share button and you can leave a comment telling me your name and location. And we're going to get into it very soon. We're getting started very soon. We're getting started in less than one minute. I ain't waiting for nobody. Jack Ryder from Charleston, South Carolina was good. We got Sean checking in from Paris. Shout out to everybody who is checking in from all over the world. I do this every single day for those of you who didn't know. Babia Giannikos checking in from Greece. Shout out to Greece. We got DC in the house. Uh, Philly is in the house. Is y'all checking in? Tell me your name and location. I'll shout you out. We getting started in less than we getting started in less than 30 seconds. And anybody who's late, they late. They just gonna have to come in the middle. They gonna have to catch up. Uh, we, don't, we don't slow down for people who show up late. We don't slow down for people to catch up. They got to listen faster. Uh, we don't talk slower. They listen faster. And if y'all don't know my saying, I didn't make this up, but I take credit for it. To be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. And to be late is to be forgotten. So we getting started very soon. Matt checking in. He said he loves the water ice. Shout out to, shout out to all the water ice that is available for purchase in Philadelphia. There's only a couple places in Miami, but we make do. As y'all are here, we are getting started in 10 seconds. I'm going to introduce myself. Then we're getting right into, we're getting right into this presentation. We got Fred from Tanzania in here. Sean said he's, he was waiting for it the whole day. Waiting for what? Waiting for this stream? I hope that's what you're talking about because that's what you're about to get. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drake Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, former nine-year professional athlete, author of 25 books, creator of this whole work on your game, framework, philosophy, brand, and business. I've done four TED Talks. I've published over 7,000 YouTube videos, 7,000 articles, done over 1,400 podcast episodes that I call live streams. Y'all might, I mean, I call master classes. Y'all might call them podcasts. I've done over 1,400 live streams, as I said, four TED Talks. As I told you, I am a coach, keynote speaker, trainer, consultant, product, product maker, salesperson, and everything that I do is under the umbrella of Work On Your Game Incorporated. What we do at Work On Your Game, I take the pro athlete mindset that I develop while in my professional athlete career and I teach how you can apply that mindset to your sports life of course if you happen to be an athlete but if you're not I teach you how to apply this mindset to your business life and how to apply it to your life life and understand that all life is a business because it costs money to be born it costs money to get buried and it costs money all in between so everybody's in business even if you don't play sports even if you don't have a life you are you have a business because it costs you it costs money to be broke so I want everybody to understand that you do not have to be an athlete to learn from what I'm going to share here every single day. Whether you follow me on IG, read my articles, read any of the books that I put out. And I'll tell you which books to read based on what you're working on, where you're trying to go. And even though today's topic is today's topic, and you can see it in the comment section. I forgot to pin my comment. Uh, let me pin that comment so everybody can see the topic. All right, there's the topic. So everybody can see what the topic is, which is the best advice that I got from my coaches during my athletic career. That's what the topic is. When I say from my coaches, I'm not talking about life coaches. I'm not talking about business coaches. I'm not talking about any other kind of coach. I'm talking about the coaches that were coaching me when I was playing basketball from the time that I started around age 14 to the time I stopped playing in my mid-30s. I'm going to tell you all the best advice I got from those coaches in two, uh, two sessions that we're going to have here. So the first one today, I'm going to give you the first half. I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, six things. So I got some really good advice from my coach. I could have made this into three, but I decided to make it two. So y'all going to get, get material packed 
in these two streams. Six points today, six points tomorrow, the best advice I ever got from my coaches. Now, why am I even talking about this? I don't think I had to go too deep into explaining this. I play sports. Of course, when you play sports, you have a coach. If you play sports, you're going to have a trainer. If you're in business, you have coaches. Everybody who's good at what they do has a coach. So any of you who is out there right now and you believe you're good or you believe you're on your way to getting good or you believe you're already good and you don't have a coach, what I'm going to tell you is not that you're wrong about thinking that you're good, but you are limiting yourself because everybody who's great has a coach. Uh, you name somebody who's really good at what they do, they have a coach. Who's your favorite basketball player? Uh, whatever team they play for, there's a coach. They probably also have a trainer. They probably also have some other people that advise them and work with them that you don't even know about. They got a bunch of people around them who they're willing to take instruction from, criticism from, critiques from, to help them stay on track and do what they do best. That's how they got good. It's not because they don't have anybody telling them that, nobody telling them nothing because they're just so good that they don't need anybody. Michael Jordan had a coach. LeBron James got a coach. Tony Robbins got a coach. Uh, Steve Jobs had coaches. Everybody who's good at what they do have people around them who can help them out. In sports, is an automatic thing because when you're on a team, somebody has to be in charge and tell people what to do. But even if you're not in sports, you need to get yourself a coach, whether, again, business coach, whatever. And it doesn't have to be a one-on-one -on -one thing. It could be somebody who you just take in all of their information. It could be a person you join their, their group setup, whatever they got going on. Somebody's online course, reading every book that somebody put out. But you need to be coached by somebody because you will learn things from other people. They can see things, they observe things, and they have insights that you will not be able to come up with on your own. This is something I tell people all the time. When you try to do everything by yourself, including learning, when you try to do it all by yourself, you will, you will run into two human limitations. Here they are. You will either run out of time or you will run out of talent. All right. No human being has unlimited time. We all know this, right? Everybody knows that one day you're going to die. So that means you're going to run out of time. And you don't have time to learn everything there is to know about where you want to go in life on your own. But you can learn it. You got to learn it from other people's experiences. So when you read somebody else's book, it took them 10 years of life to put this book together and you can read it in 10 weeks. Then you just condense 10 years of knowledge from another person into 10 weeks of time. If you just do the math on that, it makes a whole lot of sense to get as many of these as you can. So get a book get somebody's course, get whatever, because they took all the time it took them to learn that. They condensed it down to something small. They highly concentrated so you get all the right information like I'm about to do right here because I'm going to tell you stories from over 20 years of basketball experience and you're going to get it in about two hours between today and tomorrow. That is a good investment. Like We talked about investments. And at the same time, the other side is you run out of talent. Nobody is talented at everything. I don't care how good you are, how hard you work, how dedicated you are, how much of a hustler you think you are. Nobody is talented at everything. So any of you out there who's trying to do everything on your own, if you're an athlete and you're trying to do everything on your own, you don't have a trainer, you don't have a skills coach, you don't have anybody helping you with the business side of things, you don't have anybody helping you with whatever you got going on, you're not good at all of it. So how are you going to do it all by yourself? What, what that means is if you're trying to do everything by yourself, then you're probably coming up short in several areas, but you have just crafted a story in your head. You rationalize it to make you feel all right with it, even though you're not performing at your best level if you're trying to do it all by yourself because you're not good at everything. So it's impossible for you to be at your best level at everything if you're doing it on your own. And anybody who has a question or a concern, I will address them at the end. That's the way I do it here. So if you got any questions, I will go through the comments and I'll address everything at the end of this. So don't, don't try to do everything on your own because you'll run out of time or you'll run out of talent. All that being said, I sold you on the idea why you need a coach if you don't have one. If you play sports, you already had a coach and the coach hopefully helped you. So you need to get a coach even when you're outside of sports. All that being said, let's get into our points. The best advice I ever got from coaches in my life. So each one of these points, I'm going to tell you the story of what happened, who it was that told me, and what you need to take away from it. Point number one, this is the first team I ever played for. I was 14 years old. It was at uh, Finley Playground, Philadelphia, PA, the Mount Airy neighborhood. Shout out to Uptown and Philly. And the coach was this guy named Steve. Actually, I mentioned Steve yesterday, and I told you something else he said, but this is something that he said. Actually, I'm going to mention Steve a couple times here, and this is my first coach, so maybe that's why he made such an impression. I remember some of the things that he said. At the beginning of the, the tryout thing, we tr had tryouts for like a week. You know, you come every day, not every day, maybe three times a week for a couple weeks as he whittled down all the players who tried out to be the actual team. You know what I'm saying? So probably like the second day that we had tryouts is probably maybe 20, 22 boys trying out for this team. It's a 14 and under team. So we're all 14, 13 years old. And the second day, Steve had us all standing on the baseline, you know, when the coach is giving his instructions. And he said, listen, this is not a tryout. 
And I don't remember exactly what he said after that, but I always remember him saying, this is not a tryout. And all of us was kind of nervous because we was all looking around like, all right, am I going to make it? How many people here are better than me? Uh, how many roster spots would there be for me to be able to make it if I take all these guys who are better than me and make the club? So we were all kind of nervous. I know I was nervous about whether I make this team. This would have been the first organized basketball team I ever played on. And I did make the team. But when he said that, years has been over 20 years since that happened. And I still remember it to this day. And here's the thing that I want you to take from that. That they, there's a, I think it was uh, Yoda, the guy from, what is that, Star Wars? I don't, I don't watch those movies, but I think he's from Star Wars. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. And he said, you either do or you don't do. There is no try. I believe that's Yoda who gets credit for that. But a lot of people have said it. I just said it right now. So if you go say it, then you can give me credit for it. You either do something or you don't do it. I heard Tony Robbins say that if I put a chair in the middle of the room, because he was talking to somebody and they said, well, I'll try to do. He gave him some advice and they said, well, I'll try to do that. Tony, because Tony asked me, can you do it? He said, I'll try. And he said, all right, if I put a chair in the middle of the room, I tell you to sit down in that chair. All right. You're either going to sit down in the chair or you're not going to sit down in the chair. You can't try to sit down in the chair. See, if I tell you to go to the gym and work out, you can't try to go to the gym. If I say wake up an hour earlier so you can get your workout in before you go to work, you can't try to do that. Either you're going to get up, if you usually get up at 6, you're either getting up at 5 or you're not. You either do it or you don't do it. There is no try. Now, understand what Steve was talking about, my coach. He was talking about tryouts, but it's the exact same thing. If you go to a basketball tryout and you're looking at it as a tryout, like I'm trying to make this team, well, you're probably not going to make it. Because the only time you're trying to do something is when you are failing at it. Because if you are actually doing it, there's no trying, right? If I say I'm going to wash the dishes in the sink, I'm not going to try to wash the dishes. I'm either going to wash them or I'm not going to wash them. But there is no in-between. You either get it done or you don't get it done. Now, why does this even matter? Why am I even bringing this up as the first a key point that I learned from one of my basketball coaches is that in the professional world, in anything, sports, business, and everywhere in between, there is no try. All right, there is no participation trophy. All right, you don't get a, a round of applause because you attempted to do something and you failed. You either get it done or you don't get it done. And at the in the professional world, when you have a task or a job or something that is expected of you and you do not get it done, you know what happens. You don't get any more tasks. It's not because they give you less work. It's because they kick you out of the room. You don't have a job anymore. If you don't deliver, it's over. In pro basketball, I've seen it so many times with so many players. I've seen it on teams that I was on. A player will come in to work out with the team for one day. They call that a tryout. You get to come try out with us. It's not really a tryout. All it is is you just join the team for practice. It's not like they set up drills or none of that. It's not like what you see in the NBA combine when they're measuring your vertical, see how fast you run. They don't do that. All you do is join the team and practice with the same stuff that everybody else is doing, and that's your audition. And if you're not good in that one day at practice, you don't get invited to the second day of practice. That's it. It's over that fast. So either you performed or you didn't. And that's how quickly opportunity comes and goes in life in anything that you do. Again, I'm using sports as the canvas for this because I played sports, but this applies to everything. You either do it or you don't. If you come up short, you do not get another chance to do it over again. There's no story that needs to be told. There's no, well, I was sick. I was tired. I didn't know what to expect. I wasn't ready. Well, okay, we understand all of that. You still can't come back because you didn't impress us. You're not good enough. We're moving on to the next person, on to the next one. So as soon as you go to something and you decide you're in, you got to see yourself as in. You got to see yourself as having got it done, not trying to get it done, but that is done. When you say that to yourself mentally, you will take the actions to make sure that it comes to life because your mind is not know the difference between imagination and reality. So if you can assume it deep enough in your mind to accept it as a reality, you will act on it as if it's a reality. That is just a, some mental alchemy that you can perform. Now, make sure you believe it before you get to the point that you have to perform so that you actually do the work so you're prepared for it ahead of time. Point number two. For those who came in the middle of this, the topic here today is best advice I ever got from my sports coaches. Number two, same coach. This guy named Steve. One day, we were, I made that basketball team, 14 years old. We were playing in this game. I remember it was on a Saturday. I only remember it was a Saturday because it was daytime. The game was. We're in this gym. And the other team, these, this guy got like a double technical foul, got thrown out the game. They kicked him out the gym, made him leave and all that. So when you get two technical fouls in, at the amateur level, a technical foul is two free throws for each tech. And the NBA is one. But in the, every other league in the world, even overseas, I believe, if I remember correctly, is two foul shots when somebody gets a technical foul. So this dude gets two techs. He gets thrown out the game. 
and I was the best. I was the designated shooter on the team. So the coach Steve, because the referees like coach, somebody gets to shoot four free throws. Name which one of your players going to shoot these free throws. So Steve called my name, and he said first he called me over to him, and I jog over to him. And mind, just the first basketball team I ever played on, so I don't have that much game experience. And I made some shots, but it's not like I was lighting the world on fire. And he called me over. And he was sending me to the line to shoot the free throws. He calls me over to him, and this is what he says. He said, make these. That's all he said. He said, make these free throws. He didn't say free throw. He just said, make these. And he said, go ahead. And then I had to go to the line and shoot four free throws. And I had never, I'll tell you what happened in a moment. I had never, ever heard a basketball player or a coach or anybody refer to it. The only shot that I ever heard a basketball person refer to as like a guaranteed make is a layup. Like if you shoot a layup, you're supposed to make it, right? And if you can dunk, obviously you dunk. But any other shot, I always consider it any outside shot, like a jump shot, a three-point shot, a free throw, any of those. I consider those to be like a chance shot. You might make it, but you might miss. Like you can't really control it. I didn't see that as something you're expected is expected to go in, especially with a 14-year-old kid. So this is the first time I ever heard that. He just said, make these. Like I'm supposed to just just be just like that because you said it, make it. Now I can make a layup. I don't know if I can guarantee I can make four free throws, especially with everybody in the gym watching me. But then I went to the line and I made all four free throws. Now maybe maybe it was luck. Maybe it's because I was destined to be a good shooter. Maybe it's because Steve put the battery in my back by telling me to make these. But what that did for me, let me tell you why this matters and why I'm giving this to you as the second best one. The second, the second great thing that I heard, learned from basketball coaches was that Steve's mentality was when you decide that something is done, it's done. It's that simple. You don't have to overthink it. If you know you're capable of doing it, then there's nothing stopping you from just giving yourself the directive to get it done. So even if you're doing something that is maybe at a level that you only reached that level one time before in your life, if you tell yourself, OK, I'm going to that level again. There's nothing stopping you from doing it except your lack of belief that you can get to that level again or your lack of commitment to get into that spot again or doing whatever the thing is, whether it be make a dunk again. You only dunk once in your life. Somebody said dunk again or you only won the championship once. Somebody says win the championship again. Whatever it's going to be, once you decide that it's done in your mind, again, does not know the difference between imagination and reality. So when you decide that it's done, if you can convince yourself mentally that that is what's going to happen, you will take the actions that follow behind that belief. The challenge for many people, even though many of you have maybe heard that before, that you don't know the difference between imagination and belief mentally, is that many people, even though they understand that logically, they can't come to grips with it emotionally. So even though they're saying it, all right, yeah, it's done. I'm going to do it. It's done. I don't have to think about it. It's no try. You just do it or you don't do it. I'm doing it. But then their emotional mind, their subconscious mind, their instincts, that have been so conditioned, so trained to not believe, so trained to not really believe anything that you say about yourself because you never followed through on it before, they say, oh, man, you're not really going to do it. You're not going to make all those free throws. You're not going to make this dunk. You're not making this basketball team. It don't matter what the coach said. You know you can't make it. You know you can't do it. You know you've never done it before. And what happens is we think ourselves out of the action that we know we are capable of taking. We consciously know we can do it, but then our subconscious mind that has been programmed with years and years and years of telling ourselves that we're going to fail, telling ourselves that we're going to come up short, not believing in ourselves, self-doubt, second-guessing, hesitating. When it's time for us to actually act, now we have this conflict. You got the conflict between your conscious thoughts, which says, all right, you don't have to try, you just do it, or just make these shots. And then your subconscious thoughts, which is an accumulation of every thought you've had in your entire life up until this point, has been this co combination of negative thoughts, self-doubt, not believing in yourself, coming up short, stopping and starting, hesitation. Those two come in conflict. And when they come in conflict, what you get is a whole bunch of random results. See, if your subconscious is all positive and your conscious thoughts are all positive, you're going to get positive outcomes. If your subconscious thoughts are negative and conscious is negative, you get negative outcomes. It'll be, you'll shoot 1,000%. It'll be perfect every time. You'll know exactly what's going to happen. But when you have a conflict, you're positive over here, negative over here, or you're in the middle over here, in the middle over there, what are you going to get? Your results are going to be in the middle, which means sometimes things will work out and sometimes things won't work out, but you never know what to expect from yourself. So if any of you listening to this here has ever been in that position where you know what you want to do consciously when you're thinking about it, when you write it down, you read it in a book, you're, you see it on Instagram, you're hyped, you're excited, you know the things consciously you want to do, but then your subconscious mind 
comes in and starts telling you what you've been telling yourself all up to this point before you heard that hyped up motivational video and then you get these random results this is why that's happening so how do you fix this is you got to change what's going on in your subconscious mind you see your conscious mind you can change what's going on here anytime you want because right now i'm telling you things and you're consciously thinking about everything that i'm saying you could do this all day you can listen to youtube and audio books and podcasts and read books all day consciously you're thinking about that stuff but the change that's going on in the subconscious, you got to do a little bit more programming. It has to be more consistent. It needs to be space repetition. It needs to be emotionalized. And you need to be doing it over and over and over and over and over again until you drill it into your mind to the point that your subconscious mind opens the door and lets those new thoughts in. That's the way your subconscious mind works. You have to deliver it something over and over and over again. Not just once, not just when you're excited, not just when you're feeling like it, but over and over again. That's the only way you can change what's going on in your subconscious mind. And guess what? I happen to write a book about that. It's called The Mental Workbook. You can get that at workonmygame.com slash workbook. It's called The Mental Workbook. It's available physical, physical digital audio. It's about programming your subconscious mind for the success that you want in life. When Steve said to me, make these, I never heard anybody say that. And again, I just went to the line and I knocked down those free throws. Now, could I have made a million free throws in a row? Probably not, but I made those four simply because he said it in such a way that like he didn't think there was any other possibility. So his belief and my ability to make those free throws transferred to me and it lasted for at least that 30 seconds that it took me to walk to the free throw line and shoot four free throws and I made them all. So sometimes you can transfer your confidence to other people for a short period of time, but they can't keep that up forever. What else do you got? And that's when you got to program your subconscious mind to work for you. Point number three, today's topic for those who came in the middle here. Best advice I ever got from my basketball coaches. I'm going to do two parts, one today, one tomorrow. Now we're on the third piece of advice. Same coach. So what was this? All right, the same coach gave me the first three pieces of advice. Same guy, 14 years old. We were in practice one day. So my role on the team, I was like the, the outside shooter. Because at the beginning of the year, he was like, anybody who can prove they can knock down an outside shot, you'll get a spot on the team. I proved I can make outside shots. I made the roster off that. I became a starter off that. And all I did that whole year, 14 years old, I was just standing around the three-point line. I never dribbled. I don't think I grabbed any rebounds. I was a non-factor on defense. I, all I did, I didn't make any layups. All I did was stand at the three-point line and shoot a three anytime I got an open shot. That's all I did. So one day we're in practice, and we're running this play where I would get the ball, and I would shoot a three. And we're just working on plays. And I missed it. We're running the play. I get past the ball. I shoot. I miss. And Steve's like, run it again. We run the play again. I get past the ball. I shoot. I miss. Steve's like, keep running because we're just working on running the play. So then the third time I got the ball, and we had a, a defense playing against us. I was open again. And this time I didn't shoot it. I passed up the open shot, passed it to somebody else, and Steve blew the whistle. He said, hold, stop, stop, stop. And he pulled me aside, but he said it long enough for uh, everybody for everybody here. He said, man, Dre, you just passed up that open shot. Why? Because you missed a couple in a row. That's why you passed up that open shot. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm missing a couple shots in a row. I'm going to just keep missing shots all day. Nobody else is getting the ball. I'm just missing. Why would I keep shooting? I didn't say all that. I just said, yeah. And Steve said, listen, man. He said, your role on this team is you are, and people who are leaving comments, I answer all questions and comments at the end, not during the middle. Steve said, your role on this team is you are the designated shooter. Like, that's your role on this team. You're the best shooter we got. We're running the play for you for a reason. If you're open, you shoot every single time. He said, your new mentality as a shooter is I don't miss. You might have saw my Instagram post about this where I'm in the red shirt and I'm shooting those threes without jumping. I'm telling this story. So if you go see that post, you can see me saying this. He said, your mentality is I don't miss. That's the mentality of a shooter. I don't care if you miss your last 10 shots. The next time you get the ball, you better shoot it as if you made your last 10. Shoot the ball every time you're open. If you're not going to shoot, then you shouldn't even be on the court. So shoot it every time. Your new mentality is I do not miss. Now, what does this matter to you? What's the application of this point here is that well, what's the, what's the point? Then I'll give you the application. Is that when you are going after what you're going after, when you're in the midst of taking action, then you are not thinking about failing. You're not thinking about mistakes. You're not thinking about what might go wrong. You're not thinking about how it didn't work out last time. You're not thinking about what somebody in the crowd is saying. You're not thinking about all the problems you got at home or the bills that you got to pay. All you're concerned with is I'm getting this job done right now where I'm at. And any other problem, any other thing that you got to deal with, you can deal with that later. But in the moment of action, you must be overcome with self-belief that you're going to do what you came there to do and you get that job done. 
Robert Greene talks about this in his book, The 48 Laws of Power, chapter 28, Interaction with Boldness. When you step into the moment of action, again, you might not be the best in the world at what you do. You might have had a rough time the last time that you did it. You might have missed your last 30 shots. But the next time you step into the room, you're a lawyer, you lost your last case. But the next time you step into the courtroom on a new case, uh, you can't go in there with the baggage from the, la from the L that you took in the last case to this new case. And then you're going to lose every case. If you're a basketball player, you missed your last three shots. You can't be thinking about the shots that you missed when it's time for you to shoot the ball again. You're going to miss every shot you take the rest of your life. If you went on a, you, let's say you were married and you got divorced and now you start dating again, you can't be carrying around the baggage of that divorce for the rest of your life. You'll never get another date again. You'll never find love again if you're still carrying around the baggage from the last relationship that didn't work out. If you put out a book or a product or a service or you did a webinar or a live stream or you put a post on IG and nobody watched it, nobody cared, nobody liked it, people was laughing at you because they thought it was trash, you can't carry that energy, that negative energy of failure, what you see as a failure, you can't carry that energy around with you to the next thing that you do because you'll never do anything successfully ever again. So no matter what happened in your past, you have to be mentally tough enough and remain confident enough to show up the next time as if that last time didn't even happen. This is how I define mental toughness. And I talk about it in this book right here, Work On Your Game. Y'all don't know about this. I'll tell you about this later. Mental toughness is your ability to remain disciplined, meaning you keep doing the, your job, and confident, meaning willing to put yourself out there and do your thing, whatever that is, even when the last time you tried it, it didn't work. Even when being disciplined and confident has not been producing results. Even when... You're seeing a whole bunch of other people get results faster than you, better than you, more easily than you. And you're like, you don't know what's going on and why you're not getting that result yet. Mental toughness is you continue showing up, doing your job anyway, even though things are failing. Kobe Bryant told this, said this one time. I heard him say, if I play in a basketball game and I go 0 for 10 in the game, the game's over. I went 0 for 10. Then that's a failure for me. And people think. And this is what Kobe said. He said, people think that's a failure because I missed all 10 of my shots. But no, the reason it's a failure is because I didn't go 0 for 30. And the point that Kobe was making, I think he said, he went on to say this. I'm paraphrasing him here, is that if I miss 10 shots and then I stop shooting, that's a failure because now I lost all my confidence. I stopped believing in myself. I stopped believing in the work that I put in. I stopped believing in my practice and my offseason training. And because I missed 10 shots, I just stopped trying to shoot. And this is what happens to a whole lot of players who didn't have Kobe's mentality. They missed 10 shots. They're like, I ain't going to shoot no more because I don't want to bring the team down or I want to keep messing up or I don't want to go 0 for 20, so let me just stop at 0 for 10. Kobe said, no, I'm going to go 0 for 30. I'm going to just keep shooting until I make one. And if I happen to miss all of them, then I'm going to miss all of them. But I know, this is Kobe speaking, I know that I earned the right to shoot the ball 30 times. So if I go 0 for 30, listen, I earned the right to go 0 for 30. It's not like I'm some dude who never works out and never practices and never put time into my game shooting the ball 30 times and missing. I've done all the work. I've done more work than anybody in this gym. So if anybody deserves to shoot the ball 30 times without making one, it's me. So you, you earn that mental toughness by putting the work in. Putting the work in is what? The first principle of the whole work on your game philosophy, which is discipline. Showing up every single day to do the work. And I'm going to tell you about this when I tell you about this book right here, The Mirror Motivation, later on. So... I don't miss. That is your mentality with whatever you do. You could be a, a pickup artist. You could be a basketball player. You could be an Instagram influencer. You could be an IG model. You could be a salesperson. You could be selling vacuum cleaners, cut co knives. Whatever you do, I don't miss. It doesn't matter what happened last time. It doesn't matter if the last one didn't go right. It doesn't matter if your last sales prospect hung up on you. It doesn't matter if your last 10 customers all canceled and asked for a refund. You don't miss. Your next one, you got to walk in there as if you won your last 10 games, as if your last 10 sales all went perfect, as if you are the best in the world at what you do the next time you walk into the room because the energy that you bring in the room is the energy that you're going to walk out of the room. But you walk in there doubting yourself, you're going to walk out doubting yourself. You walk in believing in yourself, everybody else is going to believe in you. People cannot. People do not look so deep into each other as to find out what's really going on with you. We read each other on the surface. So when someone presents themselves as confident and believing in themselves and successful, you know how people are going to perceive that person? As confident and successful. Why? Because that's all they can go off of. All of us, each one of us individually, is so focused on ourselves that we do not have the time to really look deep into another person. We just go off what they show us. So if you present yourself as self-doubting and you don't believe in yourself and you have no confidence, that's how people are going to treat you. 
But if you walk in the room as if you're very confident and you believe in yourself and everything you're going to do is going to get the result that you want, even if you're a complete bum, people must treat you that, like you're confident because they have nothing else to go off of. They can only go off of how you present yourself. And that starts with the way that you think. And I'm going to tell you about that when I tell you about the mirror motivation. Point number four, the topic here today is the best advice that I ever got from my sports coaches. The fourth one, now I'm going to finally take it to a different coach. That was my coach, Steve, for the first three. So shout out to Steve. Number four, I was 16 years old at this point. So these kind of go in order. So tomorrow I'll tell you more about when I was older. But I was 16 years old. I was playing the neighborhood team, same gym, same neighborhood, but a different coach. And on this team, I was like the third, third banana on the team. So it was like these other two dudes, they got the ball more than me. They got more shots. And we played in this Christmas tournament in my neighborhood gym. And we lost in the Christmas tournament. And like the semifinals, we lost to this other neighborhood team. And after the game, we was coming out of the locker room in the back. And I was talking to one of my teammates. And somebody was like, they were saying something about why we lost. And I was making this like cocky statement but it was kind of like tongue-in-cheek i was kind of joking but i was also serious i was like no that's not why we lost we lost because they wasn't giving me the ball and i was again kind of joking but i was kind of serious and one of the assistant coaches he heard me say that and he heard, he didn't know that we was just joking about it and i was just saying it and he was like he heard me when i was walking by he's like what you say dre and i looked at him and i said it again i said we lost because nobody was giving me the ball and he didn't say nothing. He just looked at me. And I just turned around and walked out and went home. And we, this is during the Christmas. It was Christmas break tournament. So we didn't have practice for like a week. So when we went, came back to practice, I saw the head coach. And the head coach didn't hear me say that comment. But the assistant coach heard it. So, of course, the assistant coach and the head coach talked. So he told the head coach, obviously. So when I, we get back to practice, before practice even started, the head coach pulled me aside. He's like, hey, Dre, come here. He was like, you know what, Dre? He said, you be real cocky. You be talking all this, this and that about all this stuff you can do. So you know what I'm going to do, Dre? I'm going to give you a chance to prove it. You know, he said, I'm going to start running some plays for you and I'm going to give you the ball and we're going to see what you actually do. We're going to see if you can back up all this talking that you're doing. So in the second half of the season on this, this local team that I was playing on, they start actually running plays for me. He started actually giving me the ball. He started actually giving me a chance to do what I could do, see what I can do. And I actually started delivering. I had no idea if I would deliver. I had never proved it before. i never been on a team where I was like one of the focal points. I had been on teams, but I'd never been the focal point. He kind of made me the focal point, and I actually delivered on it. And what I want you to get from that, and that gave me, and this was when, actually, I was a junior in high school that when this happened. I didn't even make my team at school because we only had varsity. We had no JV. And that confidence that I got from this team when this dude finally gave me the ball gave me the confidence to know that I can make the team in high school, even though I went to high school and sat on the bench. But then the year after that, I was in college and starting. So go figure. But the whole point of this is this. When you feel like you're good enough to deliver, when you feel like you're good enough for an opportunity, but the opportunities are not happening and nobody's really giving you a chance and nobody's really giving you a look, at some point, you got to speak up. At some point, you got to learn how to make noise for yourself. And the rest of what's going on. At some point, you got to make noise for yourself and draw some attention to what you can do so that people recognize it. If nobody's paying attention to what you're doing, you got to make some noise. I heard somebody say once, if nobody's calling your phone, you got to start ringing some phones. If nobody's knocking on your door, you got to start knocking on some doors. If nobody is lighting up your inbox by sending you messages, you got to start sending out some emails. If nobody's texting you, you got to start texting somebody else. At some point, if there is no noise and conversation going on around you, it is your job to start the conversation. You can't just sit around. I see too many people in this world, in business and sports everywhere, who believe they're good, believe they have something to offer. And I sometimes even know, I'm like, yo, this person is good. You do have something to offer. The problem is nobody knows who the hell they are. Problem is nobody knows about their product or their service or their skills or their game or whatever they could do for somebody. They're a secret. They're like a secret star. All right, they're, You don't want to be a secret star. All right, it's good to be a secret star for a little bit of time, but at some point you want people to know who you are. Right? You don't want to die a secret. Okay, You don't want only 10 people to know about you your whole life. And at some point you got to make enough noise that people know about you. And if you're not willing to put something on the line, and say what some people might think is crazy. Like some people could have thought I was crazy for saying that. Oh, we lost because they didn't give me the ball. Like the coach could have took that in a real negative way. I didn't even, again, I didn't even know he heard me. But the assistant coach happened to hear me. I wasn't talking to him, but he heard me. He was all in the conversation. But he could have took that negative. He could have been like, yo, you off the team for saying that. 
But I had to be willing to at least believe enough in myself to say, yo, give me a chance. Give me the ball. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens then. I mean, giving them the ball didn't work. We lost. So how about you give me the ball? If we're going to lose, we can still lose. But give me the ball and let's lose. Let's lose that way. You got to be willing to speak up and draw some attention to what you're doing and what you're saying. And then hopefully if you're going to be speaking up, making noise, hopefully you've been working on your game and you actually have something that you can deliver with. Now, don't be out here running your mouth and you ain't got no game. All right, don't be talking about you could do this and that, and then when you get your chance, you don't do it. All right, make sure you actually can deliver on whatever it is that you say, but then you got to draw some attention to yourself. If you're not willing to do that, then you have nobody to blame but yourself because when nobody's noticing you, okay? There's plenty of opportunity out here to get seen, heard, and known. Listen, on these all these platforms we got right now, anybody can get known if you want to. All right, no, you can post on here as much as you want, all day, every day, say whatever you want. Nobody's policing it. You can get yourself known if you want to get known. Now, once you get that opera, once you get that attention, I heard uh, Marcellus Wiley say this. He used to play in the NFL. He does TV on Fox. He said his grandma once told him, once you call for that attention, you can't hang up. All right. So once you call for attention, all right, now you got it. Now everybody's looking at you. Now what you going to do? All right, you better have some game to back it up. Point number five. For those who came in while I'm talking, the topic here today, I'm giving you the best advice that I ever got from my basketball coaches. Anybody who came in the middle, I take all questions and comments at the end, and I'm almost done. So I got two more points. Number five, this is that same team, 16-year-old team, but a different person. This is that assistant coach, this dude named Bob. So we made it all the way to the championship game in this league. They started giving me the ball. We went all the way to the championship game. I'm killing it. I'm scoring. The other teams are scouting for me. We get to the game. The opposite coach is like, yeah, don't let him score today. Like joking. But I was like, damn, I'm actually becoming somebody in basketball. This is the first time I was actually somebody and the other teams like knew who I was. Like, yo, yeah, don't let him shoot because I had a reputation for being good. And this story that I'm about to tell you, I tell you in this book here, work on your game. So we get to the championship game. I'm feeling great. I'm like, man, I'm about to kill it. We're about to win this championship game. This coach from one of the best schools in the city, Simon Gratz High School, this dude named Bill Eller, but he's passed away now. But he was at the game because he was looking at me and one of my teammates possibly going to recruit us to the, this is the best high school in the city in terms of basketball at the time, Simon Gratz, 20 so years ago. And I choked in that game. I wasn't nervous. I was not any type of apprehensive, but every shot that I took, it was just not going in. I scored two points that whole game. I made the first shot of the game, and I did not make another shot the rest of the game. And we were undefeated. We had not lost a game all year in the league. We lost that Christmas tournament game, but that was a tournament. That wasn't in the league. In the league, we had not lost a single game all year. We get to the championship game, playing against a team that we already beat, and we lose the championship game. And I had two points. So I was kind of like the, the, what do you call it? Like the, the reason that we lost. You could kind of point to me. If this was the NBA, everybody would be on TV the next day talking about how I choked in that game. I had two points. I was like one for like eight, one for ten, whatever. We lose. And I remember the coach took me out at the end of the game when the game was already decided. I just went and sat at the end of the bench, and I was pissed off. I was mad at the coach for taking me out, even though I had gone 0 for, one for ten. And at the end of the game, this other coach, this dude named Bob, he came over to me. He said, Dre, listen, before you blame anybody else for what happened tonight, before you blame the coach for taking you out, before you blame anything outside of yourself, you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what did you do that led to tonight's outcome? All right, what part did you play and what happened here tonight? And he didn't go into any other detail. He didn't like say, yo, you shot one for 10, you were missing all that. He didn't have to say that because everybody knew what happened. I was there. He didn't even have to say all that. All he said was you need to look at yourself before you look at anybody else. And... What that did for me, I mean, any of you who follows me at all, you listen to any of my material, you know, this is kind of the way that I communicate with people all the time. It's like we always, no matter what story I tell you, what information we talk about, I could talk about something that happened in politics, something that happened on TV, something that happened in some reality show, something that happened to somebody that you know or some customer that you were talking to. We always bring it back to who? Ourselves. We always got to bring it back to number one. The reason why we always bring it back to ourselves, no matter what takes place, even if the other person was dead wrong, even if somebody really did you wrong, they are 100 percent to blame for the situation. We always got to bring it back to ourselves. And there's only one reason why we can't control what other people do. You can't control if your coach is a hater and he doesn't put you in the game. You can't control that you don't know anybody and everybody else knows somebody. And that's why you didn't get the opportunity. You can't control it that your boss is a jerk and they don't know what they're doing, but they're still making you follow their process. You can't control that the company that didn't hire you hired the wrong person and that person they hire is going to bring the whole company down. You can't control the fact that 
this COVID-19 is happening right now and a bunch of people can't work and can't make money. You can't control that. There's a lot of things in life, 99% of things that occur in your life, you have no control over. Any of y'all ever been in a car? Or you know when you're driving a car, it's just that one little yellow line that separates the cars going this way and the cars going that way. If somebody comes right across that yellow line and hits you, it's a wrap. You can't control it, but you still get in the car every day, even though you know that, right? On a plane, any of you know how to fly a plane? If you don't know how to fly a plane, but you've been on a plane, then you are putting your life in somebody else's hands. And you don't have any control over what they do from the time that plane takes off to the time that plane lands. You have no control whatsoever. 99% of the things that occur in your life. Any of you is a farmer. We got any farmers listening to this. You grow. You got a farm right now and you grow all the food that you eat. 100% of it. You grow it. You cook it. You wash it. And you eat it from farm to table at your house. If we ain't got no farmers on here, that means everybody else, you are eating food that was touched, prepared, grown, and packaged by somebody that you don't even know who they are. You don't know if they wash their hands. You don't know what kind of diseases they got. You don't know what they did to that food, but you eat it, don't you? 99% of the things that occur in your life, like this phone that you're watching me on right now, or this tablet or this computer, did you design it? You seen the inside of it? Do you know if there's a bomb in it that might explode at any minute next time you put it up to your face? No. No. All right, but you still use it every day, all day. 99% of the things that occur in your life, you have zero control over what's going to happen. You know who your next door neighbor is to your left and to your right? You know if they're crazy or not? You know if they're thinking about blowing up the building? You know if next time you come out your door, they might be waiting to just strangle the next person they see? You don't know. But you still keep living. You still go outside of your house, right? You don't control most of what occurs in your life. All you control is a little tiny 1%, less than 1% actually. And the only percent you control is what you do. How you think, how you respond, how you react or don't react to anything that's happening in your life. So even when something goes wrong and you know it's not your fault, you can prove in a court of law that it's not your fault, you always still got to bring it back to yourself. What did I do that led to this situation? What did I not do? What did I ignore? What information did I have that I did not apply? What wisdom did I know that I didn't use? What did I learn out of this situation that will keep me from making the same mistake again? What will keep me from dealing with people like them again so I don't end up in this situation again? There's always something that you can do about a situation. If you're in a situation where you can't do anything, then you might as well not even concern yourself with it mentally. Don't even waste your mental energy because there's nothing you can do about it. But there's always something you can do, even if the only thing you do is changing how you think about a situation. Point number six. This is the last one. Today's topic, for those who came in the middle of this, we're talking the best advice I ever got from my basketball coaches in my life. And tomorrow I'm going to do part two. Number six, it was my freshman year of college. So I finally made the, I made a team in, I made the team in high school, sat on the bench, averaged two points a game as a senior, walked on in college, I became a starter. So imagine that. So my freshman year, I'm starting Penn State, Abington. And I remember it was this dude named Steve. Steve was older. I was a freshman. Steve was a sophomore, but he was a little bit older. He's probably like early 20s. And at this school, Penn State Abington at the time, you only play two years of sports. So Steve was a second year athlete. I was a first year athlete. So this was his last year playing ball. And Steve was like a 6'3 center. But that's how it was at that level of school at that time. And I remember I would drive him home back and forth every day because he had a car, but he would borrow his like his mom's car or something. I had my own car. So I would take him often from practice and games and stuff like that because we lived in the same neighborhood. And I remember Steve would say to me, like, Dre, one day we was driving back. He was like, yo, the coach wants you to be like that guy on his team. The problem is he can't make you that guy, Dre, because you don't know the plays. <laughs> He's like, Dre, you don't know the plays. You got to learn the plays. And the reason I had such a hard time learning the plays in my freshman year of college is because I didn't have that much game experience in basketball. I had a lot of experience like playing pickup. I knew how to run and jump and grab rebounds and shoot threes and score points. I knew how to play basketball, but I didn't know how to play like in a team setting where you had a coach and you're running plays and there's a system. That's a whole different thing than playing pickup. And a lot of players ask me stuff about this, like, Dre, how can I get better at learning plays? Well, the best way to get better at learning plays is you got to kind of get in the games and learn plays. You just got to get on the court. That's really the best way to learn. And for me back then, that was the only way. For y'all, you got YouTube now. Now you got coaches who get on YouTube and all they do is show you how to run plays on video all day. And you can watch it for free. I didn't have that option. If I had it, I would have used it. You have that option. But I didn't have that option. But what is the point of this? And this advice, again, my teammate told me this, but he said he got it from the coach. So 
ostensibly the coach told me, but he said it through Steve, which is learn the plays. Now, what is this? Why is this a good piece of advice that the coach gave me? Is because whatever organization you're going to be a part of, whatever team you're on, whatever you're doing, you got to know what the program is. So you can't just walk into somewhere blind and think, all right, I'm good. I'm talented. I got skill. I'm going to just do what I want to do. And everything's going to fall in line around me. That's not usually the way that it works. All right. If you have a job, all right, you can't just go in there and do what you want to do. You got to you got to get with the program or you're going to be out of a job. If you get into an industry, even if you're an entrepreneur, you got to find out what the game is for that business. If you don't know what the game is, then you can't do your thing. I'm an entrepreneur. But when I get into professional speaking, I had to find out what the program was. I had to find out how do you play this game so that I can get in the game and get some of these bags. Right. When I wanted to write books, these are my books. I could self-publish a book, but I still had to find out what the game was so I could make the book the right way and get it to the right people and sell the book so I can get the money. When I wanted to do a book, when I did a book with a publishing company like I did with this book, I had to find out what the deal was. What's the deal with publishing companies? How do they work? What do the contracts look like? What parts do I need to look out for? I had to read the contract, go talk to a lawyer, go back and forth on these things. I had to find out what the program was. So even though you may be independent and maybe you think you're really smart and you got game and all of that, you still got to know what the program is. If you don't know the program, the program will use you up and spit you out before you even know what the hell happened. Find out what's going on. If you're on a sports team, know the program. If you're an entrepreneur, whatever industry you're in, find out what's going on. Find out who knows what. Get the information. Do not be the dummy in the room who doesn't know what's going on. All right, it's 2020, and whatever year you happen to be watching this, all right, it is no longer acceptable to not know what's happening. All right, ignorance is not an excuse. All right, to be ignorant means to not know. All right, it's, no, it's not acceptable to not know what's going on now. Now, if you don't know what's going on and something that you don't do, that's fine. But if it's something that you do, if you say you're an author and you don't know what's going on in the publishing world, that's unacceptable. Now, you say you're a basketball player, but you don't know what's going on in the world of nutrition or taking care of your body or flexibility, that's unacceptable. All right, you say you're a nutritionist, but you don't know anything about veganism or the paleo diet, that makes no sense. You say you're an online influencer, you don't know anything about um, branding or advertising or whatever else they got going on. It's unacceptable. It's your job to know what's going on and what you say you're doing. All right, you say you're going to do this, then do it. Get the information, do the work, invest the time. If you don't know the plays and you don't know the program, then you're going to get used up and spit out by the program before you even know what happened. So all that being said, I'm going to recap these six points that I gave you here today, six First six best pieces of advice I ever got from basketball coaches. Then I'm going to tell you about these books in front of me. Then I'm going to answer every question. So you got a question, go ahead and post it in the comments. Keep it short. Make sure it's a good question. Best advice I ever got from coaches. Point number one, this is not a tryout. When you see yourself going into something, see yourself as having already done it. You are not trying. You're either doing it or you're not doing it. Number two, my coach said, sent me to the free throw line for four free throws off a technical foul. He said, make these. He didn't say, try to make them. He didn't say, we need you to make them. He said, make them. And his confidence transferred to me. And if you want to program your mind to be that confident all the time, get the mental workbooks. You can program your subconscious mind, not your conscious thoughts, but your subconscious thoughts. Point number three, my coach told me I don't miss. Just because you miss three shots in a row doesn't mean you should hesitate on shot number four. You miss 20 shots in a row. Don't hesitate on shot number 31. Kobe Bryant said, if I go 0 for 10 in the game, that's a failure because I got scared to keep shooting. He should go 0 for 30 is what he said. It's just because you failed the last thing that you tried does not mean you should hesitate on the next thing that you tried. Your mentality is every time I go out, I'm going to succeed, even if the last 30 times were unsuccessful. Point number four, the coach said, I'm going to give you a chance to see if all this talking you're doing, Dre, you can actually back it up. And I backed it up. The point is, if you think you're good enough for an opportunity, you got to be willing to make some noise and draw attention to yourself. If you're not willing to think that you're that guy or that girl, nobody else is going to think it. Nobody's going to believe in you more than you're willing to believe in you. And point number five when you mess up do not blame anybody else don't blame the other person don't blame the situation even if they're the one that's to blame don't blame them because you can't control them they might mess up again what you gonna do then you just gonna keep blaming everybody else you can keep blaming it on the rain you got to blame it on yourself always take responsibility for any situation you end up in even in a, even if the only thing you can do about a situation is change the way that you think about it, that means there's something that you can do. There's always some control you can have over a situation. Never let the situation control you. And number six, learn the plays. You got to know the program in anything you get in. You want to be an influencer, you got to know the program. You want to run advertisements, know the program. You want to be an athlete, know what's going on. You want to write books. 
Find out how the game goes. Whatever it is you want to do, there are rules to the game. There's a way that game works. If you don't know the rules of the game, the game will use you and spit you out before you even know you are out of the game. You're out of the game. So whatever game you're in, learn the rules and learn the game. All that said, now let me tell you about these two books. I got to be quick here. Now, both of these books are already paid for. You do not have to pay for these books. All you do to get either of these books is take care of the shipping. I'm going to tell you what they are. I'm going to tell you why you want them and where to go to get them. This book right here is called The Mirror of Motivation. The book is free. All you do is take care of the shipping. What is this book? It's called The Self-Guide to Self-Discipline. I told you I was going to tell you about discipline in a minute. This book will help you program your mind so you can be the person you really want to be, so you can do what you really want to do, so you can have the things that you really want to have in your life. The reason why you want to do all of that is because that means you'll be doing what 99% of people in life do not do. Most people drift through life with no aim, no mission, no target. They don't know who they are. They don't know where they're going. They don't know where they want to be because they just drift through life. They have no purpose. They have no dedication. They have no desire. If you want to get off that train and get on a different train, this is the book that you want. This is the starter book. If you've never heard of me, never read anything that I ever made before, this is the book you want to start with. That's why I made it free. Go to mirrorofmotivation.com. Take care of the shipping. I will ship this book to you worldwide, anywhere you live. We just ordered 30 more of these so we can ship them out ourselves because with the COVID-19, shipping is taking long for everybody. But we got a lot of books arriving this week to a lot of people. Mirrorofmotivation.com. So you can be who you truly want to be as a person, who you truly need to be as a person. Person you already know you are, but you haven't been activating that individual. This book will be your activation so you can do what you really want to do. When you take the same actions with a different energy, you get a different result. And that's why you have the life that you, that you want to have. Mirrorofmotivation.com. This book right here is called The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. This book is for a specific audience. This book is only for people who want to play professional basketball overseas. If you don't want to play basketball overseas, this book ain't for you. You can get this book. You can stick to this book. But if you want to play basketball overseas, you can get this one and you get this one. This book is a 237-page guidebook, me sharing with you how I, coming from a D3 school where I walked on, no connections, no agents, no coaches, no scouts, no game film, no nothing, didn't know anybody who had ever played overseas, made a nine-year professional basketball career out of that. How is that possible? I wrote a guidebook to show you how to do the exact same thing. This book, Overseas Basketball Blueprint for anyone who wants to play professional basketball, travel the world, get paid to play ball, get your travel covered by the team, get your food covered by the team, and all you got to do is play two to three hours of basketball every day. That's your whole job. If there's a job better than that, somebody tell me what it is. There ain't a job better than that. I'm an entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur is not better than being a professional basketball player. Trust me. Balloverseas.com is where you get this book. Balloverseas.com. You want to play ball overseas, this is the book. Not a book. The book to know what you need to do to start a professional basketball career. All that being said. Now we're going to address whatever's going on in the comments. Instagram might kick me off before I'm done. If Instagram kicks me off, I'm going to just start another live and y'all can just come right back in. I got like six minutes to answer these, so let's see. If you got a question, go ahead and post it. Be, be brief. Be terse. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Eyeball 2424 was good. Fred from Tanzania. Oh, yeah. I shouted you out earlier. Let's see. Let's see. Harris from CT was good. Akash, I just told you. The books are free. You just take care of the shipping. Now, this book right here, Work On Your Game, is my other book. This one's not free. You can get it at workonyourgamebook.com, but I'm going to give you so many bonuses that it might as well be free. And I got 22 other books that are not here in front of me, but you can find out about those at a later date. Coffee the Great says, is this what the winner's mentality is? Everything I talk about is the winner's mentality. It's not one thing. Coffee says, what's the difference between the mirror motivation and the mental handbook? Mirror motivation is the self-guide, self-discipline. The mental handbook is the mental toughness guide. Two different things. Two different principles of the whole work on your game philosophy, which is discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative. So there's a book for each one of those. Mirror motivation, super you, mental handbook, 100 mental game, best practices. We put all four of those books together. We call that the Bulletproof Bundle. And guess where you can get that? Bulletproofbundle.com. So there. Now I just told you about some more books. Saleh says, do I have to keep reading multiple watch? I don't know what that means. You got to read. Do I have to keep reading books and watching content talking about this point over and over again for better mentality? Not necessarily. It depends. If you find a good book, you should read it over and over again. If you find good content, you should watch it over and over again. And then you have to implement. It's not just reading and consuming. You got to implement. You got to put it into action. Uh, Coach Kev said, I needed this. I appreciate that. I'm glad you needed it. I did it for you. 
Dorian says, this philosophy without even know it has helped me sign with an agent overseas. I need to take the same philosophy to my education. That's what's up. We can use that as a testimonial. So shout out to everybody who got that agent and getting that overseas game going. Eyeball says, you can go so far in life with the right mindset. That's a fact. Money May says, what is Steve doing now? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm in Miami. I don't know where Steve at. Actually, my dad be seeing Steve sometimes. So shout out to Steve. Johnny Boy 301 was good. Narissa Street, what's going on? Yes, this is true mentorship. I hope you're talking about me. <laughs> Eyeball said, if you wouldn't have said that, who knows what would have happened next? Yeah, exactly. Well, nothing would have happened. I would have just kept being a role player on that team and nothing would have happened. Jay Adrian was good. Jay Cobb, what's going on? Coach Kev said, are these coaches real names or made up names? No, they're their real names. I mean, where are you going to find them at? I just told you their first name. Ain't like, it's not like I'm telling you something bad about them. Eyeball said, we need more stories like these. They're so inspirational. Well, listen, keep listening to me. I got plenty of stories. I got more stories than I got time. Trust me. Time to tell you all. Coffee the Great said, got me paranoid right now. Yeah, that's how it could be. But if you, if you really think about it, that's what it is in life. But we still got to keep living. True Essence says, literally experiencing this and trying to keep taking a look inside. Exactly. I'm glad you came in here. I appreciate you watching and getting, the, getting this value that I drop every day. Coach Kev said, Dre got us understanding that we're taking risks as soon as we step foot outside. Exactly. I mean, you're taking risks every day. You turn on the water. You don't know what's in that water. You're, taking a, you're showering in it. You're drinking it. You're making your food with it. Your refrigerator. All these computers you got around you. You have no idea what's going on. Money May says, no cap, most of the ballplayers I grew up with are in gangs, dealing and doing drugs. Like, people change after high school or college. That's true. My boss says, my biggest flaw is running plays. Get that game experience. Introspective idea says, just want to confirm, is mental alchemy creating the mentality you need to get the results that you want? Now, mental alchemy means taking something mentally and changing it around in your mind in such a way that it works for you. But there's a good way to do that, and there's also a bad way. But that's why I write books about it, so you understand it. Because if I was to give you a 30-second explanation of it, you wouldn't quite get it. It takes a little bit more context than what I can tell you in 30 seconds. That's why I wrote a book about it. Mirrormotivation.com. Datuba says, is confidence the key to consistency if you have ability to do something? It's all of those. Discipline, confidence, mental toughness, and personal discipline. You need all of them. Confidence is believing in yourself, but if you haven't done the work, then what, do you, what are you believing in? So I need discipline and confidence. And even though you believe in yourself, doesn't mean everything's always going to work out. So I need mental toughness. And even though you got mental toughness, doesn't mean you did anything. You still got to take action. That's why you need personal initiative. That's why all four of them are necessary. Discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative. You need a whole package. Bulletproofbundle.com. So you get all four books or here's the better way. You get a better price. Go to mirrormotivation.com. Put in the info to get your free copy of this book. You're taking care of the shipping. And then there's a little box. If you check that box, you can get the Bulletproof Bundle where you get all four books shipped together. So that's where you get the best price on a whole bundle, all four of these books. That's insider information. But if you want to pay full price for all four of them, then go to BulletproofBundle.com. But if you want the, the better deal, go to Mirror Motivation. Just check the little box. Six eleven six baller was good. Big Black Wolf said, "You want to say if you don't get things fast enough, the world is going to pass you by." That's true. So how do you move faster mentally to be a step ahead of others? Well, you can start by reading these books and then applying the things that I'm saying. Then you can go to Working Your Game University, which is the right down there, WorkingYourGameU.com. That's where I put out a master class every day, and I talk about speed. I talk about implementation speed, how fast you got to move, how you can't be a slow learner, how life will leave you behind if you move too slow. I cover all of that. At work on your game university. That's work on your game you.com right there. And Facebook, y'all see it up there. Uh, Eyeball says, What's your shoe collection like? Oh, you gotta ask me a better question. All right, so I got a minute and 45 seconds left. I'm gonna tell you about these books one more time. Anybody got a question, post it quick. I got a minute 41. There's, there's a countdown on the screen right now. It's like a bomb about to go off on Instagram. Mirrormotivation.com. You want to be the person that you truly know that you really are deep at your core, but you haven't been expressing that individual so you can get the real results that you really want in your life, which will separate you from everybody else out here, all the sheep out here who are drifting through life like a feather in the, in the wind. Go to mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is free. You take care of the shipping. I will ship this to you worldwide. doesn't matter where you live. If you want to play professional basketball overseas, travel the world, get paid to play ball, get your housing paid for, your food paid for, your travel paid for. All you got to do is play ball for two to three hours a day. Now, you got to have game. 
Let me make sure I'm saying that. If you ain't got no game, this ain't going to work. If you have game and you want to play professional basketball overseas, go to balloverseas.com. This is the best job in the world. Listen, I don't even have this job anymore, and I still say it's the best job in the world, is being a professional basketball player. You only got to work two hours a day, and all you're doing is actually literally playing a game. There is no better job. Go to balloverseas.com. Ship you that book, you just take care of the shipping. Coffee the Great says, How do you learn faster to keep up with the world? I just expose myself to information like yours. Well, pick the right mentors, pick the right people to learn from, then you learn from those people. You got to learn from the right people, though. Saleh says, Everyone dreams, but few can deal with adversity. That's true. All right, everybody, I got 20 seconds left. I'm wrapping it up right now. I'm going live every single day, 5 15 p.m. Eastern. 5 15 p.m. Eastern, every single day, I'm going live right here tomorrow. If you like this one, tomorrow I'm doing part two. Same time, same place. Wash your hands. Don't touch your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay away from that rony room and work on your game. We out of here. Dre all done.